Welcome back there, boys and girls. It's time for more learning at home with a video that you're definitely supposed to watch at home, but you probably didn't. And then you conveniently don't have your headphones or earbuds when you come to school, even though I watch you put them on and in your ears as soon as you leave my room. Interesting. For those of you watching this at home, gold star. Those of you watching this in study hall, gold star. Those of you watching this in class because you couldn't be bothered to do it for homework, F minus. Now that I've gotten that out of my system, let's talk about chemistry, aka the study of what stuff's made out of. What stuff? You know, all stuff. First, let's activate some prior knowledge. Everything is made out of matter. That is correct, matter. For those of you who follow along at home, it's like an episode of Blue's Clues. Yay. All matter is composed of Yes, atoms. Very good for all of those of you shouting along at home. Each element on the periodic table of elements, which P.S., that's what we're learning about now with chemistry, represents one atom. That's how we actually define an atom or an element. Any substance that cannot be broken down into smaller substances, wait for it, using ordinary means. That's our official textbook definition, which begs the question, um, what are ordinary means? When we say we need ordinary means to break things down, if you're watching this in the time of Corona, which you probably are, there should be a question interrupting me right now, like on edu, edu something or other, or near something or other. Ed puzzle, ed puzzle. This is how we break things down. That right there, youths, is the good old atom bomb. Look at it in all its majesty. I believe this is well, the one called the Fat Boy, and it made a boom like that. That's a boom that took out an entire city. We didn't even know what was happening, but it was an entire city. Used to not be, or used to be a city, and then it was this, and then it was literally not there anymore. For more on that, pay attention in history class when you get to World War II. Here's some more things that you should already know, but we're just gonna make sure that this information is up, queued up, and ready to rock. Atoms are made out of three particles. We call these three particles the three subatomic particles. Sub meaning uh, beneath or below, and particle meaning particle. So atomic, subatomic, they're smaller than an atom. We got protons, we got neutrons, and we got electrons. Notice the spelling on neutrons, that's important. N E U T, neutron, as in neutral, neutron, proton, electron. Worth mentioning, atoms are mostly empty space. So when you look at an atom, here's a beautiful diagram of an atom. You'll notice that we have some electrons out here. We've got our nucleus, which is our protons and neutrons in here. And all the rest of this area is all empty space. The majority of every atom is empty space, which means the majority of all the everything is mostly empty space. Weird, but that's what's up. Nucleus, we talked about the nucleus being in the center. That is because the word nucleus actually means center. What's in the center? The center. We call it the nucleus because it's found in the center of the atom. The nucleus has a positive charge from the protons because protons are positive. See the Protons are positive, and they're going to attract the electrons because the electrons are negative. Sort of uh, works similarly to how the sun attracts the planets. I know, I know. Gravity and electromagnetism, different, but works in a very similar way. And it's got fields and the way the energy flows. It's just, it's, it's similar and it's a pretty decent way to think about it. So you have these electrons sort of circling or orbiting around the nucleus, just like the Earth and the other planets are circling or orbiting around the sun. Physically works out to be similar. The nucleus, just like the sun, keeps those electrons, just like the planets, in orbit. How exciting. However, Unlike the planets that don't tend to like crisscross each other, they don't really necessarily stay in these nice orbitals. Instead, they've got more of what is called the electron cloud. So in the electron cloud, you've got the space where all the electrons could be at any given time. These areas here that are darker, 
that's because they're more likely to be there at that time. They move real fast. So this would be like if you took a, a picture with like an older phone and you're waving like, hi, I'm waving. But then your hand is just like one big blur. Maybe I can do something with that in post. Maybe this is just me going like this to the camera and I leave it in because it's, that's dumb. But yeah, and just, so that's how it looks like a big blurry picture where they spent more time here. They were here more, less here around the outside. And so uh, it's, it's uh, lighter out there. P.S. These electrons, they're moving. When they're moving really fast, we actually call those electromagnetic waves, you know, because they're electricity. That's just the vibrating, the moving back and forth electrons. And they do so in the cloud. And when they go from one cloud to another cloud, that is that object conducting electricity through it. Just like the wires that are connecting all the components of your device that you're watching this video on right now. And by wires, I mean solder and transistors and stuff like that. Here's another representation of the electron cloud. You can see you've got your nucleus, and then here's all the space, the cloud, where the electrons could be. No, this is not like a billion little electrons. Again, this is just where they most likely are. You can actually learn all this information by looking at my friend and yours, the periodic table of elements. Invented way back in the day by this guy named Mendeleev, he put them in order of what he called atomic mass, or basically how Harry's stuff was. We have it in order, by atomic number, but you'll notice there is also a pattern as you move across with the atomic mass. What pattern, you ask? Well, you should look at your very own periodic table. But with the pattern in the time of Corona, you're not giving us papers. Don't worry, children. ptable.com. And in the slides, you just click that link, and it'll take you to this periodic table, the letter P, table.com. Let's talk about this periodic table. The periodic table shows us several things. We already talked about atomic mass or how heavy, how massive it is. How we find this number, this is the sum or the total of the protons and the neutrons put together. So all that stuff in the nucleus, that accounts for what we call the atomic mass. The electrons, while they do have mass because they are matter, the mass is so very, 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 very tiny that it, it just, it doesn't matter. It's negligible as far as the atomic mass is concerned. Then we have the atomic number, which is another way of just classifying and looking and describing the element. And that is just the number of protons. Notice that these two both deal with what's in the nucleus. Atomic number tells you just number of protons. Atomic mass tells you protons plus neutrons. So if I want you to tell me the number of protons an atom has, that's easy. It's the atomic number. If I want you to tell me the number of neutrons an atom has, then you'll have to take the atomic mass and subtract the atomic number that will give you the number of neutrons. Not too bad. Atomic mass minus atomic number. So number of protons plus neutrons minus protons, that gives you neutrons. Easy. How do we know the number of electrons? Because these are the only two numbers that we're going to talk about in this whole lecture today. Oh, man. How are we supposed to know the number of electrons? Is there an electric number? No. However, if there's no charge given, you can assume the atom is neutral. And for right now, uh, let's just say they're all neutral for today's activity, and probably tomorrow's activity, and probably the next day after that's activity. They're all neutral. And so every proton is plus one. Every electron is minus one. So if you say, for example, had three protons and three electrons, plus three, minus three, is zero, that's neutral. So in a neutral atom, the atomic number is the number of protons, and because there is no charge, it will be the number of electrons. Now, if there's a charge, it's going to be different. But since there's no charge, it's not. You're welcome. To organize this information nice, quick, and easy, we utilize what is called the atomic symbol. We abbreviate atoms with the first few letters of their name. Every atom on the periodic table is abbreviated by the first few letters of its name. I know, I know. You're looking at tungsten, you're like, tungsten doesn't start with a W, does it? Well, the name's not always in English, all right? That's Wolfram, which is the German name of tungsten. So it's still technically the first few letters, just not always the first few letters in English. Like AU is gold, like AU, let go of my gold. That is because it's aurum, which is Latin for gold. 
So sometimes it's just not the English name. Here is a picture of the atomic symbol. Here we have helium, capital H, little e. That's important because if it was capital E, that would mean it's another element. The first letter of the symbol is always capital. Sometimes like hydrogen, that's just H. H E is for helium. That way you know the difference between hydrogen and helium. Then we have some numbers around the outside. So let's go with the four. That's for the atomic mass. The atomic mass always goes in the top left superscript area. That's where it's big and up super meaning above. Over here in the top right superscript, that's the charge. But like I said, there ain't gonna be no charge for a little while, so we uh, we don't need to deal with that one. But if there was a charge, it would go there. Down in the lower left, the subscript area, that's the atomic number. This lets you know where it is on the periodic table because they're arranged in order of atomic numbers. So this is the second element on the periodic table. The superscript down here, uh, if there was one, would tell us how many helium atoms we're dealing with. Since there's nothing there, we can assume that it is the number one. That's, that's how we do. Now, if there was a number there, like a two, that would mean we have two helium. There they are, two helium atoms hanging out, being helium. There's not, because there's no number there, so there's just one. This one has a charge, oh wait. No, it doesn't. Speaking of no, it doesn't, let's see how that worked. Here on a periodic table, here's helium. Notice that on the periodic table, the, it's not in the same order, right? They've got the two up above it, but it tells you over here, that that's the atomic symbol. And then it's got the name, which is helium. It's got the atomic number, the symbol, helium, and then the weight, which uh, for this case, for this periodic table, that is going to be the same as the atomic mass four and then two and that's how it goes on our symbol right there see the four the two it goes in that order whenever we draw the symbol it will always go in this order it won't always be in that order on the table but it will always be in that order when i say draw the symbol so you just need to memorize top left corner mass bottom left corner atomic number top right would be a charge if there is one and if there's more than one helium atom that goes in the bottom right did no one notice though that four is different from this atomic mass. That says 4.0026. Now, yeah, I know, that's close to four, but technically a little bit bigger than four. And we just went through this whole thing with the graphing with how if you round it, now your numbers are gonna be all off and it's gonna be whopper jot and everything bad will happen. Here's how you do it. When you look at the atomic mass, you gotta round it to the nearest whole number. So four, we're gonna round that down to four, 4.0, we're gonna round that down to four. If we look at, say, oxygen, which is right below it, with 15.999, you'll round that up to 16 for your atomic mass. We'll talk more about why these are decimals later. For now, just know you, the one that's a decimal, that's pretty much always gonna be the mass. They're not always a decimal, like these ones down here are whole numbers because those ones are weird and don't really exist IRL. We just sort of made them in a lab. But over here, anytime you're not sure which one is the mass or which one is the atomic number, the one that pretty much is always a whole number, that's gonna be your atomic number. The ones that are decimals, that will be your atomic mass. There, nice and easy lemon squeezy. Next, you're going to use the periodic table to do what I call the pen game. The pen stands for how many protons, electrons, and neutrons, and while we're playing the pen game, we might as well practice drawing out the symbol as well. Now, for these ones, I put the abbreviated symbol on there for you. So this is hydrogen, carbon, neon gets the ne beryllium gets the be aluminum gets the al and silicone is si however you should know i will expect you to be able to give the big n little e if i ask for neon but for right now trying to make it nice and easy speaking of making it nice and easy why don't we go ahead and just do hydrogen together so you'll need your handy dandy periodic table we're going to be looking at this hydrogen right there so let's go ahead and make it big so we can see it there it is Tell me now, what is the atomic mass for hydrogen? It's 1.008. That's pretty easy. Round that down to one. So the atomic mass for hydrogen is one. Next, we need the atomic number, which is also given as a not decimal. There it is at the very top. It's also a one. This makes boys and girls for the easiest pen game in the history of pen games. You'll notice there's no charge on here. The atomic number is one. That means we have one proton. 
the charge is neutral, so we also have one electron to cancel out that one positive proton. The atomic mass is also one, and I know you're like, oh, but it's one. No, remember, the atomic mass is protons plus neutrons. So we have protons plus neutrons equals the atomic mass. We've got one proton, we've got a mass of one, so if we had any neutrons, the atomic mass would be higher. So because one plus neutrons has to equal one, we can't have any neutrons, so that's a zero. That's a zero. And that's all you have to do. You find the mass and the atomic number. The atomic number tells you protons. Since there's no charge, the electrons will be the same for all of these. Then you subtract the atomic mass from the number of protons. That tells you the number of neutrons. Or in this case, we have the atomic mass of one minus one proton. That equals zero for our number of neutrons. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. So why don't you go ahead and just do the rest. Come to class with the rest of this pen game filled in. I know there's more worksheet below, but don't worry. We'll do that part together in class. Just make sure you've done this part for your homey work. We'll be checking the pen game to start class, and then we'll roll on to making some Bohr models. That's what you need to know to be ready to use a periodic table. Thanks for watching.